Well, to discuss those challenges, I spoke to Professor Kabir Hassan from the University of New Orleans. I asked if growth predictions of around 7% are realistic for this year. Well, this is very highly likely as long as we have political stability in Bangladesh. We have been growing at 6% plus for the last 10 years. And given the country is growing and the per capita GNP is growing, there is a huge uh, internal market. So it is very likely. And I'm very hopeful that it can be achieved very easily, provided we do have political stability. So with that being the case, then, what are some of the sectors that you, that you think are really going to contribute the most to that growth? Well, we have this traditional manufacturing sector, uh, sorry, uh, garment sector, and in addition to that, we have high growth potential in ceramics, uh, light um, manufacturing, uh, IT outsourcing, leather industry, uh, agro, uh, agri, agro industry, for example, frozen fruits, and we have also the fisheries industry that can really contribute a lot to this growth sector. And are there any, perhaps, any up-and-coming sectors that could also provide a bright spot going forward? Uh, the blind spot, uh, of course, we do have this um, infrastructure problem. We do have power and energy problem. So the government has to really, uh, I mean, do something in those two sectors uh, so that there is steady supply of um, energy and there is also electricity and these roads and highways are good. Uh, communication, so that will contribute a lot to the growth potential of Bangladesh. And if they, the government can, uh, I mean, fix these two sectors, it can really, I mean, more than 7% growth, it is very likely. Now, in terms of some of the challenges, we also know that ISIL has claimed responsibility for a number of tax since 2015. So how is the government dealing with that threat? Well, the government is, has a zero, zero tolerance against this um, uh, terrorism threat, um, and I think it's handling uh, pretty well. But in the process of handling this, there's also innocent victims in the crossfire. So the government has to be very careful, you know, not to, I mean, reduce the number of casualties while handling this uh, terrorism threat by the ISIL. But the government is saying that there is no ISIL inside Bangladesh, but there could be operatives, local operatives, those who are trying to destabilize the country. So that threat is there. So if you're a company and you want to do business with Bangladesh, what's the government doing to really ensure confidence that this is a place to really invest your business? Well, the government has to make sure a good governance um, in every sector and first and most important political stability. It has to really mend its uh, differences with the biggest political party of the country so that the next election is perceived to be fair. I think this is the most important the government can do. And of course, uh, the way the government is planning, we have um, surplus in um, food, food and we are food self-sufficient. We are a country of 160 million. That's a great achievement. So this government is doing a lot of good things, but it has to really add you know, good governance, uh, freedom of speech, and some way that is kind of restricted, I feel. So the government has to really look into these two things. Now, let's also look at China. In terms of some of the investment that you're seeing in Bangladesh, how has that relationship been growing? Well, China and India are the two most important neighbors of Bangladesh and two largest. And of course, you know, the America's role is shrinking in this part of the world. So given this, uh, China and I personally believe that we should have a balance um, between China and India. Uh, India has been our partner since our independence, but uh, also we cannot rely on only one country. And in China, we have a long-standing, you know, um, military relationship as well as trade relationship. In 2016, it's about 13 trillion, 13 billion dollar trade. But the trade is one way. There's a huge deficit within China, so China can really, I mean, fill out this gap by investing directly into sunset industries in Bangladesh and relocating this, some of the industries here, and that's probably will take care of some of the trade deficit and also help the country to grow. Now, one thing that we're seeing in terms of uh, regional cohesion is China's One Belt, One Road initiative. How do you see that playing into Bangladesh's economy? Well, that will play a great role. And actually, this old Silk Road concept China is trying to revive with uh, China, India, Bangladesh, and Myanmar. But it has been kind of because of rivalry with India for the last few years. I think it should be really revived again for the benefit of uh, all these big countries in this region here. So. And China has already taken some steps in this direction. I believe they have 
uh, have infrastructure development funds, so they're trying to build that um, this one belt, one road, and that will be helpful to all the countries here. I strongly believe in this regional connectivity.